Welcome back and in this segment we will be talking about rationalizing our expenditure during the holy months of Ramadan and conception and uh, we're happy to have with us uh, human resources uh, expert as well as happiness coach Dr. Miret Sukkari. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. I'm talking about rationalization during the holy month of Ramadan, which maybe I believe that it is already taking place automatically due to the uh, hiking prices, of course, that maybe, yes, people are buying some things more, but because maybe before Ramadan, they are not using a lot and they can just prepare anything. But, you know, while fasting, they need certain items that they need to buy as well. So. I don't feel that people still, they are not aware of the rationalization, or how do you see it? Um, I see it first, it starts with the mindset. So why did we decide that we need certain items because it's Ramadan? Why did we decide we need these specific foods for Ramadan? Actually, the, the concept is to fast, is to forget about food for a month. It's an amazing detox. And just start feeding the, the soul, the heart, something like this. But somehow, over the years, people decided that is the month to really overeat and put all the, the fantastic foods. It's as if they're feeding the body, the, the material part, the physical part. When in reality, Ramadan is about feeding the heart. You're supposed to remove yourself from that. So what I believe to start the rationalization is to actually go back to the mindset and like, why am I doing this? And you're going to tell me because it's culturally been this way for years, we're always doing this and this is the way it is. But it's time to change. It's actually time for the whole society to start thinking, what is the purpose of Ramadan and what am I supposed to be feeding? Actually, I'm supposed to have a light body. And in reality, the body does not need very much food. And we know because the prophets used to eat very little. We're able to eat very little and be fine. And people are paying thousands of pounds to go on a detox retreat. Well, this is a detox <laughs> at home. <laughs> you don't have to go anywhere. So it starts with the mindset. We need to start changing the way we think and minimize and teaching our children. In fact, this is the month we're going to eat less, if we're talking about the food and the major expense in Ramadan. Now, is there a certain technique or certain measures or style that we should do or use to utilize the mind or to reset our minds? Resetting the mind is just taking a decision and saying, like I just said, awareness. It starts with awareness. Yes. Like, what am I doing? Why are we overloading food? What am I getting the more expensive foods? Why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. It is a holy month, but you could do this maybe once a week if you want to have fun. But it's actually supposed to be a fasting month. That's what the, the name of the month is fasting. And somehow we turned it into a, a super eating festival, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is totally the opposite of the thing. So to the, the question you just asked, mindset is a decision. So you just awareness and like, okay, I'm going to decide to do it a different way. And it starts by taking the decision. And it is time for us to teach our children the real meaning of what is Ramadan, to start to decrease the costs and decrease the physical impact of all this food. People come out, maybe they have, they're sicker or they're, they have, they've gained weight. And, and during the month, they're always tired. You call everybody, they're tired before iftar and they're tired after iftar. When actually they should be lighter. It should feel much lighter. Yes, but what about the pressure, the idea that they'll be pressured by their family members that they are having less food on the table? Uh, how can we overcome that? Because usually people are expecting a festive meal. It's going so to take now the children might think that there is a, prob a financial problem, that's why it's happening, and then people will get depressed. <laughs> that's why we have to explain. I'm not saying people are going to go hungry, but you're going to tell them this is a month, a fast, one month in the year where we're going to decrease our intake of food, actually. Mm -hmm and explain why we're doing that, and make it a family. It's, we're we're re, reteaching a society about something. That's the first thing. Have plenty of food. There will always be plenty of food. And um, also to decrease costs, change the habits. Like we need to decrease the animal protein. Mm -hmm. Not just because of costs, because it's lighter. Um, it starts eating more from what the land produces. I just recognized a few days ago this is something very funny. We're cooking with things our land does not produce, like the nuts. Mm -hmm. The nuts did not come from our country. The nuts came from uh, Turkey and these countries cooking. We should be using our products. Mm -hmm. The only nut we plant but is the majority pita. now. They are not looking for the They can't afford so anyway. That's what I'm saying. Let's talk about the culture of the Egyptians, for example. 
before Ramadan, they are not buying a lot of basic commodities, actually, due to the hiking prices. But during the month of Ramadan, for example, talking from reality, they will need oil, for example. Maybe before Ramadan, they will need less because, you know, there are certain kinds of food that they need to, to, to cook during Ramadan, for example. Uh, talking about, uh, you're talking about proteins, they will need soup. Yes. They, they need to take it, for example, out of even of a very, some small pieces. You know, there are some basic uh, kinds of food. They are not making uh, festivities or something like this, but also you have children who are fasting. They yes. need so to eat something that is healthy. I'm talking even about vegetables. The prices of vegetables are not that low as well. That's true. But if you, what I'm going to suggest is people track their, their, their budget, even on a weekly basis. And if you notice, okay, the vegetables and fruits and everything is more expensive. But what really is more expensive is things that we don't notice, like the soft drinks. Uh, the, maybe some people are buying their fruit juices ready-made. But it, the soft drinks and the chipsies, and that's the stuff that really spends the money. If you stick to the basic vegetables and fruits, you can manage. Uh, concerning oil, uh, I use I mean in general, I'm not yeah, talking about yeah. oil. I'm talking about certain uh, items. Yes, that, of uh, course. Uh, but this, we need to also teach the country how to use, it's actually healthier, and how to cook differently. So for oil, I use like a bottle every three months because even French fries, we're doing them in the oven. We're just sprinkling oil and putting it, everything like that. So the oil consumption is much less. You can really change the, the patterns, and, and it's a good time to learn that. So in challenging times, we are in challenging times financially, extreme Something extreme happened in the last four or five months. Um, it is a time for growth. That's what anybody who works with um, um, the self-development will be saying. That's the time people grow. So it is for our country to grow now, to find new ways. And if we stick to the basics, you will be healthy if you eat a really good salad. I know the tomatoes and everything, but it's not as expensive as other stuff. Good salad, good vegetables from the land. It's re you can get all you need. You can get all you need. And in reality, everybody, almost long ago in the 80s, I did a whole re research and a book about basic needs for Egypt, and I did food. And people here are overfed and undernourished. Calorie-wise, we're taking too many calories, but undernourished, because we're eating the wrong foods. We need to be eating vegetables and fruits and things, not the, the packaged chipsies and cookies and all Junk that stuff. Junk food. Sort of. And also, we have a lot of that in the house, so the sweets cost a lot more. I'm not saying don't have it, but make it a treat, like once a week. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Twice a week, it's okay. Start rationalizing, not with telling the children that we don't have money. By mm -hmm. telling the children, this is how we're going to be healthier. We should be coming out of this month being healthier and maybe, maybe instituting better eating habits. Yes. That's the whole point, by the way. That's the whole point of fasting. Yes. And we've switched it to becoming, a, and I think it comes from the Ottomans, a huge food and festivity. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, I'm going to divert from consumption uh, because you're also a happiness coach and expert. Now, how can we feel happy while fasting? How can we be energetic? Uh, because usually once we're fasting, everybody wants to, maybe we go quickly to work and then come back and we have a siesta and we're tired or we feel tired. So how can we feel happy and uh, energetic while fasting? Okay, so one of the ways to feel energetic is to eat lighter. Mm -hmm. The other thing is to, I've asked people around me to quit, uh, to do a special fasting this year, which is to add the no complaints fasting, mm -hmm. which is really hard, even for me. No complaints fasting is really, really not easy. Mm -hmm. But every time you can't, because it has something to do with, um, it's all about energy and vibration mm -hmm. and what you think sends messages to the whole body. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking, oh my God, the street is dirty, that's a complaint. Mm -hmm. Why is it so crowded? That's a complaint. And I don't have enough time, that's a complaint. And when you start to stop those, mm -hmm. you will automatically feel calmer and peace. Mm -hmm. So I know that wasn't written to be fasting from that, but it goes with the month. So um, I've asked people to try that for three days. It's not easy. If you can do it seven days, and do it as much as you can. You can even write down how many times you caught, you caught yourself. And even as I was walking here, my mind just said, why don't we have clean? And I just stopped my mind again, Mirad, the no complaint. But one of the best ways to become happier is to stop the thoughts that lead to negative 
negative hormones mm -hmm. flooding the system. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we'd like to add. They'll be more calm. Mm -hmm. Another thing that will make people happier is to be satisfied with what they can do. A lot of people think it's the quantity. Like mm -hmm. I need to go out and I need to do this and I need to, I don't know, read how much and do how much prayers and do this. And <coughs> they overload and then they go into the self-blame mm -hmm. every night like they didn't do enough. And mm -hmm. they overexhaust themselves and they're mm -hmm. not getting quality. It wasn't meant to be done with a lot of anxiety. It was meant to be done with love. Mm -hmm. It was meant to have a good, it's an amazing month if you do it right. It's a month for you to really come to terms and be with you. How many, time, how many people have this gift? It's a gift. It's a retreat. A country or a, or a society takes a retreat. So we're allowed to have the month to have for ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's one way. And if we start having this mindset like, oh my God, it's my retreat month. This is the month I get to rest. I get to connect. I get to rest my body from so much food. And by the way, the less food you have in your body, the more you can connect. And that's why all the prophets used to go into caves or go somewhere. They eat very little whether they're Buddhists or Christians or Jews or whatever, people, when they want to connect, they don't feed the body. So it is a good time to connect, just once a year. Talking about um, the economic situation, as you mentioned right now, are you in favor or not with the idea of explaining for the children to understand the current situation, to understand the, the reality we're living in, um, talking about how they can also rationalize, for example, I know a lot of parents, um, they, have, they can afford, but I can see these parents, for example, if the child wants to buy something, so he usually asks him just this, either this or that. You only take one, e even though he can have both of them. So are you in favor of this and how to explain for the children? I'm 100% in favor of that because this, those children are going to be adults very fast, by the way. And they, they need to be trained they are, young. They are adults who are being trained. <laughs> and you know what? When you don't, like we train them with ABC, we train them in language, we train them in, in numbers, and we don't train them for life skills. And a lot of people grew up and they didn't recognize how was the house run? What was going on? How did they manage? Because nobody ever talked. In reality, you have to talk everything at its own age, but you have to explain choices because life will be always a choices. You have to explain that sometimes you have to budget, what if they are very well off, but they, they travel for some reason and they have a limited budget? Or they try to live on their own with their own income when they're married? They have to learn. So even a three-year-old, a five-year-old, you can start telling them, this is what you can spend today, and this is the prices and you choose. Yeah. I want to go back to something I just wanted to mention. Yes. Uh, I think there is a group in Canada who are fasting. Mm -hmm. They're not Muslim. And they have created something called... Uh, fast and gift. And what they have done is they fast, they say they save money, and they gift the money to poorer countries or poorer people to eat. They actually know that they can save money. So when I saw that, I said, hmm. And every year we're discussing how much the budget has to you know, increase because of Ramadan. Families, the, the newspaper, mm -hmm. everything talks about how we're going to manage Ramadan because everything has to increase. The wife is asking for more money, whatever. In reality, they understood it better and they said, Hmm, I'll be eating less because I'm fasting and I will uh, be able to give even more, which goes so much with the, with, with the holy month. Yes. Now for communication, communicating during the holy month of Ramadan, do you feel that the social media has affected our communication system or uh, the holy month of Ramadan is an exception to that? Can you restate the question? Um, in terms of, I'm, I'm, a, I'm away from consumption. I'm still with you as a happiness coach and the human resources uh, expert. I'm talking about communicating with one another because one of the big things during the holy month of Ramadan is that we always gather to eat or we round up following iftar together. Do you feel that the social media affected uh, this, these traditions that now we're sitting together in the coffee shop or whatever and each on their own mobile or uh, Ramadan hasn't been affected by the social media yet? Um, social media has really negatively impacted people's lives. People are lonelier. They have the thing, they're watching. Like, look everywhere, they're just <coughs> holding it. And I myself hold it too much. 
But in Ramadan, we all put effort to, to, to get together, to see the friends we don't see all year, to do this. We all do that still, and it's still happening. Now, whether they go sit together and then they grab the phone, that's something else. But at least it is, this is something good that's happening. Mm -hmm. We all will still have keep this idea that in Ramadan, we have mm -hmm. more time, and we try to see each other more. Although that too, I don't understand why. Because it's a time to connect and self-connect. But it has become tradition in Egypt like this. Mm -hmm. I think it's a time for you to connect this way and have time for that. But um, because when you're under, like every other day you're, you're seeing people, you don't have time. You're too tired. And that's the pressure I'm talking about. And you won't be happy. I mean, you might be happy for moments. But maybe but you because won't we get are seeing retreat. people that we did not see for long due to their quick rhythm of life. So maybe we are keen to sit together to talk, to... So they're talking about TV serials and all Why can't things. it be in another month? Why can't we say... I don't know, Janu whenever, another month of the year. That's it. Manon. It is difficult to take lunch all together during this period of time, but it is much easier because, you know, iftar at a certain time, I'm talking about practical yeah, the, issues, actually, reality, that usually are taking iftar at 7 o'clock, which all of us can gather at home, for example. I agree, but again, it's what you set up. So what if we as a society chose another month and said, okay, that month is a month of where we connect. Or like once a month. People who want to do something, do it. Mm -hmm. So we need to do that. But the rushing around is taking away a lot of the, what the month is supposed to give us. And it can give us a lot if we practice it right. Well, I'd like to thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mirat Sukari, happiness coach, as well as human resources expert. And happy Ramadan. Ramadan Karim to you. Ramadan Karim. Thank you very much. Well, and that brings us to the end of this episode of Breakfast Show. But first of all, I have to thank my colleague, Nashwa Rashid. Thank you very much, Nashwa. Thank you, Rashid. Thank you all for joining us on this episode of our Breakfast Show. And remember to join us again tomorrow, same time, for more on the show with our colleagues. Till then, thank you for joining us. And stay tuned for more coming up on Nile TV International. Oh,